Denver 7 News starts right now. This is not something that we experience on a regular basis, and we're encouraging people to stay off the roads. At 4.30, a rare winter storm is gripping the East Coast. Several states are now issuing a state of emergency. Coming up, why this latest storm could be the most disastrous. Plus, we're learning more about the mental health of the gunman who shot and killed Douglas County Sheriff's Deputy Zachary Parrish. And President Trump says, mine is bigger than yours. In the latest exchange of barbs with North Korea, some say the exchange is dangerous. But first, let's get to that breaking news. A fire breaks out in Littleton. We have a live look at the scene right now. And crews are telling us this is an abandoned strip mall there that caught fire early this morning near West Bellevue Avenue and South Federal Boulevard. Daryl Orr is there right now. And Daryl Cruz are still trying to get this uh, under control right now. What's the latest? Yeah, guys, hey, shortly before 3 o'clock this morning, Littleton Fire Department and South Metro Fire Department were dispatched here at Bellevue and Federal for a fully involved commercial building. Now, upon arrival, they found out that this building was uh, uh, empty and it was going to be uh, rebuilt and turned into another shopping center. But unfortunately, fire has taken this building when they got here fully involved. Uh, no injuries to firefighters. They are calling this a one alarm fire and arson investigators are on scene right now. They're still working to put out some of the hot spots on this building. Now, this shopping center is a little different. It's uh, individual buildings all in one area here in this parking lot. So it's not really all connected. So they were able to save the rest of the buildings alongside of this individual building right here. So they're working on this right now. You can hear probably some of the water hitting the building right now. Uh, all the walls are gone. The roof has collapsed inside. And as we get more information, we're going to pass it on to you. Live in Littleton, Daryl Lord, Denver 7. All right, Daryl, stay on scene to give us the latest there. In the meantime, we'll get a look outside. We're, it's 24 degrees. It seems like a nice warm-up, doesn't it? <laughs> so happy Wednesday. Uh, we're now almost to the first weekend of the new year. Almost there. We're Getting already closer. talking about the weekend. Yes. Uh, we're <laughs> double at where we were yesterday, though, in temperature at this time. So that's good. Thanks for being with us today. I'm Nicole Brady. And I'm Mitch Jellicker. Let's start with Lisa. She's got your first alert forecast. Today. We're going to talk more <laughs> about the East Coast, but i got to tell you, I'm a little jealous of what, they're, what they've got coming. Because they've not got a lot of snow. they got a lot of snow. Wow. We've got nothing. Maybe some yeah. flurry Sunday, so we're hoping for a little something. <laughs> uh, today it's warmer. Yesterday we hit highs in the 40s. And again, you notice this morning, it's a cool start, but not as cold. We're in the low to mid 20s right now. Mostly sunny skies again expected today. And by 11 o'clock, we should be at about 43 degrees. Very mild this afternoon, close to 50 between three and four. Here's your highs by three. We've got Congress Park at 50, Lakewood 50, 54 in Littleton. And in Aurora should hit a high of 52. Coming up in just a few minutes, chance for some snow on Sunday, Saturday in the mountains. We'll take a look at that storm, a we'll closer look at that one. Plus, Jace, what's hitting the East Coast? And speaking of the mountains, we have Loveland Pass closed down. Avalanche control work will happen later on this morning. Otherwise, a good drive on I-70 heading up the hills. Right now in town, overall, it looks pretty nice. Whether it's here on the north side of town, you can see southbound I-25 there near 84th Avenue. It's basically wide open all the way into town, about 13 minutes overall on this commute. Same thing on the south side. Now that building fire there at Bellevue, you in federal not causing any significant delays on those roads here this morning but obviously that was uh, drawing a lot of attention with the fire crew still out there getting out to dia 10 minutes on pena, pena boulevard right now thank you jason this morning we're learning more about the mental health of the man who killed the douglas county sheriff's deputy zachary parish we know that matthew real escaped from a veteran's mental health ward in wyoming back in 2014. the va says he was there for treatment after having a psychotic episode real who was an iraq war veteran seemed to be plagued with a pattern of mental health issues his own mother described him as angry and a person who treated confrontation as a game now this tragedy is spurring some serious conversations about how to effectively treat people during some mental health emergencies. Several communities right now already have mental health professionals partner with police during these types of interactions. The president and CEO of Mental Health Colorado, Andrew Romanoff, says this is a trend he would like to see continue. There's one other thing we need to do, and we haven't done a particularly good job as a state, and that is to prevent some of these crises in the first place. Uh, we do a good job in Colorado at responding to a crisis. Not a particularly good job at preventing a condition from becoming a crisis. Now, Romanoff says that that means investing in prevention and early intervention. He says it's important to recognize that the first signs of mental illness usually appear in adolescence. And there is usually a 10-year gap between the onset of symptoms and the beginning of treatment. 
This morning, we can share with you the plans to honor the life of Deputy Parrish. His funeral will take place Friday morning at 11 a.m. at Cherry Hills Christian Church in Highlands Ranch. The Douglas County Sheriff's Office will release more details today on this, including whether or not this will be open to the public. And so many of you have asked us how you can support Deputy Parrish and his family. A few things to keep in mind. The church says it will only be taking flower donations on Thursday, that's tomorrow, during business business hours. Also, as kind as it may be for you to offer food, uh, Douglas County Sheriff's say they cannot accept any food donations. If you want to donate money, you can take it directly to the Highlands Ranch substation. Denver 7 is committed to bringing you the very latest on the investigation and the Douglas County ambush. We'll update you here on Denver 7 and certainly online on the DenverChannel.com. Some breaking news to tell you about now out of Peru. Uh, at least 48 people are dead. This is after a bus they were on went over a cliff north of Lima. I have some video into our newsroom from the scene here. Six people survived but are badly injured. Right now, investigators believe a tractor trailer hit the back of that bus. That sent it over a cliff, and they think both vehicles were going too fast. Now to the major storm that's being called a winter hurricane. It's taking shape in Florida right now. Not the kind of hurricane Florida no. is used to, certainly. The storm will spread snow, sleet, and ice all the way up to the Canadian border by the end of this week. And this could be really bad. Areas uh, in this path haven't seen this kind of weather in decades. ABC's Candace Gibson shows us how people there are preparing. A monster winter storm taking aim at the entire East Coast. This is not something that we experience on a regular basis. This morning, parts of Florida under a rare winter storm warning. Schools closing today in Tallahassee, including Florida State University. And in Jacksonville, the airport canceling flights, the city's mayor with this warning. These are conditions that uh, we're not accustomed to here in Jacksonville, and we're encouraging people to stay off the roads, specifically in those drive times. To the north in Georgia, a state of emergency. Areas of that state could see snow for the first time in a century. The storm is expected to hug the coastline, dumping snow from the Carolinas to Maine. It comes as a blast of Arctic air shatters record lows across the country. I can't even describe it. It's unbearable. I'm wearing two hats, uh, two pairs of gloves. I don't know. Wind chills 50 below zero in North Dakota and Minnesota. In Chicago, crews lighting fires to keep rail switches from freezing. And overnight in Brooklyn, firefighters battling this massive apartment fire in 18 degree weather. Three firefighters suffering serious injuries and in western New York State, a whiteout causing havoc on the roads. A stretch of Interstate 90 near Buffalo shutting down after this chain reaction crash involving more than 20 vehicles. Candace Gibson, ABC News, New York. President Trump is once again taunting North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. In a tweet, he brags that he has a bigger and more powerful nuclear button on his desk. And this comes after Kim Jong-un's New Year's address where he said that he always has a nuclear button on his desk. As some experts say we're closer to a nuclear war with North Korea than we've ever been, and the opportunity to solve this diplomatically is diminishing quickly. While tensions ramp up with the U.S., North Korea seems to be reaching out more to South Korea. North and South Korean leaders spoke for about 20 minutes this morning on a hotline that hasn't been used between the two countries in two years. We don't know what exactly was discussed, but Kim Jong-un, we know, is hoping that his country will be allowed to participate in next month's Winter Olympics in South Korea. It's 438 now back here at home. The search continues for these two missing little girls who may be in Colorado. Police issued an Amber Alert after they were kidnapped in Texas. And this man you see there, Terry Miles, may be connected to their mother's death and their kidnapping. So if you see him or that car there, call 911. A news alert for a missing Boulder man who could be in some serious trouble. No one has seen or heard from Robert uh, Rakansky since the end of November. Uh, here's where the case gets a bit odd. The sheriff's office says there uh, were these three people fraudulently used his credit card at some grocery stores in Boulder all on December 18th. Investigators also shared the photographs of the suspect's vehicle, which appears to be a dark colored Toyota 4Runner. Well, this morning, we now know why John Elway is keeping head coach Vance Joseph. He says this disaster of a season for the Broncos was his own fault. Elway says he did not give Joseph the best chance to win because of the way he put the team together. 
John Elway met the media on Monday showing humility, honesty, and candor. He believes Vance Joseph will improve with the revamped coaching staff and better quarterback play. Elway admitted the rebound might take time, but he also showed bite on Monday. I always try to get better, and I don't have all the answers. I want to search and find all the answers because I want this team to be as good as it can possibly be. I'm fortunate in the fact that I've played for a long time and I've been in this job now for seven years. So therefore, I'm always trying to get better. And as soon as I think I've got it down, I'll retire. And then I'll be doing what you do because then you know it all. <laughs> Monday was all about the quarterbacks. The Broncos are searching for a starter. They added a QB in the front office with Gary Kubiak. I'm going to give him a larger role. He's going to be involved in free agency <clears throat> as well as a draft. So. Um, He'll, uh, he's a guy that's got a lot of knowledge of football, very good evaluator too, so he'll help us in that area. Elway told me he would at least consider trading away from his defense to help the underwhelming offense, but admitted he's reluctant to do so. A name to keep an eye on, a keep to leave. He would have trade value. Reporting from Dove Valley, Troy Rank, Denver 7. Elway added, though, that finding a quarterback is the number one goal right now. Yay. And, fi <laughs> uh, and finally, the sports authority name is coming off Mile High Stadium. Yeah, the sign's yeah. been up there for a long time. The Broncos president, Joe Ellis, says work will start within the next two weeks to take those signs down. The sports authority naming deal ended, of course, when the company went bankrupt. There is not a new deal or new name yet, but the team is talking with several companies, apparently. If you're interested in the naming rights, prepare to cough <laughs> off some dough. Insiders say the team is asking something around $10 million bucks a year. Mm. Okay. Well, if it seems like you're getting uh, more and more calls from scammers, it's not your imagination. Why robocalls are on the rise in our state. Plus, uh, this seems like a scene out of the Dukes of Hazard, but this crazy police chase became all too real when a suspect drove into a river. And if you feel all happy and warm inside when you hold, you hold your cell phone, there's now a study that backs up that joy you feel. 445 now. Uh, this guy got more than he bargained for during a police chase in South Carolina. Officers say he was facing numerous warrants and he took off when police tried to take him in. So the chase goes on for quite a while. Off road, as you can tell, uh, going through all kinds of brush there. And then it happens. The suspect crashes oh through a gated private property and ends up plunging into a river. Now, the problem is this guy can't swim, apparently. Fortunately, police got to him. He's okay this morning. He's relaxing right now in jail. Well, an incredible rescue caught on video in Panama City, Florida. The Coast Guard saved an 89-year-old man whose car went into the water there. They had to break a window to get to him. The man suffered some kind of medical issue that caused him to drive off the side of the marina. In North Dakota, a mysterious structure is sprouting from the Maple River. Check this out. It's getting a lot of attention. Uh, take a look. These structures are called ice spikes. An ice spike apparently occurs when the river bubbles and then it freezes over and over and over. And some of those ice spikes are now some 15 feet tall. Look at the comparison there with the cars next to it. That's crazy. Yeah, you know it's cold when there's an ice spike that's that large. It's kind of cool, though. Look it at is that. Cool. Yeah. Well, we've got the ice castles here in Dillon yeah. open now. I can't wait to get out and see those. Have yeah. you been, you haven't been there? No. Not I've yet. seen pictures. They're gorgeous. Yeah. It looks cool. And they only do it in a few different spots across right. the country, so we're lucky to have it close to us. Uh, right now, no ice spikes down here. It's mm. actually pretty warm. <laughs> we're in the 20s right now, mild compared to yesterday. Not quite as cold this morning as yesterday. We were in the teens at this point. And we are looking at 50s for the rest of the week from today through really the weekend. Pretty mild. Next chance for some snow is going to be this weekend. Saturday in the mountains, Sunday down here. So hopefully we'll get something. It doesn't look like a big storm, but could be a, a few light snow showers Sunday. Temperature wise this morning, Evergreen, you're still pretty cold. We're at 15 degrees there. Denver right now, upper teens to low 20s to kick off our Wednesday with some fairly light winds. But again, enough of a wind that up across northeastern Colorado, Sterling feels like two right now. Akron three, Denver, we're sitting at about 15 and four in Greeley. Dropping below zero. The wind chill in the mountains right now at about 5 to 10 below. Futurecast looks at a pretty mild day. Clear skies. Again, you're under a mostly sunny sky. Should be pretty close to freezing right around 930 this morning. That's going to push us into the upper 40s, close to 50, right around 2 to about 3 o'clock this afternoon. So right around 5 to about 10 degrees above normal. Overnight, back in the 20s into early tomorrow morning, and it's going to be again pretty warm on Thursday. By Thursday afternoon, we'll double our morning numbers. Should be closer to 50 again uh, here. Fort Con 
Collins Greeley will be a, a few degrees cooler. So some low to mid 50s Thursday and Friday. We'll see a few more clouds through the end of the week. Overnight lows are really pretty mild 20s to even some 30s as we head into the weekend. Now Saturday ahead of this next storm, the winds are going to kick up a bit. That'll push in some warmer air mid to upper 50s on Saturday. Then on Sunday, a chance for some flurries, light snow. It's not that cold. We'll be in the low to mid 40s and then sky should clear out by the first of next week. But Sunday into Monday, that may be Jason when we get some wet roads for the early morning drive before things clear out. Overall, though, that's a really mild seven day. Yeah, we have a lot of folks heading back to school, back to work mm -hmm. on Monday. Right now, I think we're going to see a little bit lighter than normal traffic as we saw yesterday. There should be a little bit more traffic out and about here today. Right now on I-70, it looks pretty good from the camera right near the Purina plant. That west and eastbound side look good. There will be some more activity in around Brighton Boulevard for the stock show. There's some more uh, livestock that's showing up here today as we get more events that start not only today, but also throughout the rest of the week and into the weekend. Take a look at the rest of the drive, like up to the uh, south side of town, two 25 that drive across Aurora and uh, uh, down through the Denver Tech Center wide open. That fire that we have right here near Federal and Bellevue not causing any significant delays there on the roadways. It's really off into that um, shopping center area that the fire is contained. So it shouldn't slow you down if you live over that neighborhood and you need to use those roads. Well, if you're sick and tired of getting those robocalls, we've got some bad news. It's not going to get any better in mm. the new year. Oh, well, we saw a record number of robocalls last year. The FTC received more than 375,000 complaints per month about these calls, and 130,000 of the complaints were here in Colorado. Robocalls are increasing because Internet calling services and those auto dialing systems are getting cheaper. It's also getting easier for scammers to hide their identity while they're call where they're calling from exactly. The most common type of calls people say they've been getting are about hmm. reducing debt. I wish we could just give the addresses of the people and the companies. Yeah. Just so we can call them. Yeah. Right? Oh, maybe we can. We'll yeah. find those. Uh, this might sound a little strange, but a new study says having your phone with you makes you feel good. <laughs> All warm and fuzzy. <laughs> that story and more on this morning's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, will Amazon buy a major retailer? That's the question. An influential analyst says the tech giant will buy Target this year. Other experts, they have doubts. But Target's stock rose 3% after the prediction. So far, neither company is commenting. Meantime, Amazon says it shipped over 5 billion items worldwide through its Prime service last year. It says there are about 100 million items eligible for free shipping through Prime. Amazon also revealed the most purchased items of 2017. They include its Fire Stick streaming service and bananas and there's a new twist on how smartphones are impacting our lives a Stanford University study found the mere presence of our phones will make situations more pleasant and cause people to concentrate better researchers say it doesn't necessarily mean we're addicted to our phones they just make us happy so there you have it it's like a smart pill <laughs> those are your tech bites I always feel bad because if my phone's about to drop I'm like no no I, I don't treat my kids like that so. <laughs> oh, there you went again oh, yeah. sorry Get up, shake it off. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, after the break, we have your feel-good story of the day. We do. One man shows us why a little kindness can go a long way for those in need. How about this for some New Year's inspiration? A man in Houston is starting off 2018 by reminding us all of the power of good deeds. His name is Edward Pollard. Just gave his favorite waiter a car. He says wow. this man serves him frequently at the restaurant right across from the street from his office. It always puts the smiles on, on his face. So when Pollard leaves work, he often sees the waiter sitting at the bus stop. So he decided to get uh, his extra car detailed, just like new, and then gift it to the waiter. No! That's your car. No! That's your 
How about that? Love that uh, reaction there. Uh, he's sharing the story, hoping to inspire others to do simple things every day throughout this new year. Lisa, do you have an extra car? No, and you know, as a waitress, I never once got a car. In fact, once I got stiffed, that was my, my gift once. Uh, we're in the low 20s this morning. We'll be under a mostly sunny sky by noon, mid 40s, and then closer to 50 by, eight, uh, by 4 o'clock this afternoon. So really very mild. Nice on the emoji cast. Coming up in just a few minutes, we'll take a look at how much longer this warm sticks around and a look at the weekend snow. Had a pretty easy drive. Nice and dry conditions down here and even up into the high country. Here's 6th Avenue going out towards Wadsworth and coming from Golden to downtown, maybe 10 minutes minutes. Same thing on that westbound side. The overall map looks pretty nice too, whether it's out to DIA 225 or the south side. We'll take a look at some of the potential trouble spots coming up. Well, here's a look at what we're working on for 5 a.m. here on Denver 7. If your kids got some new computers, maybe a tablet for Christmas, we have a warning today. Plus, a new artwork is opening at the Colorado Convention Center today. We'll tell you the message behind this unique display. And a devastating news here. Uh, there may be a chocolate shortage. No. The problem and how chocolatiers hope to fix this, I would hope, at 5 a.m.